Hey everyone, Hannah Mouse One here, and in this video I'm going to be painting some watercolour landscapes. Um, mostly because I suck at landscapes and I want to get better at them, and you don't get better at anything without significant practice, so that's what I'm going to be doing here. And um, sorry if you hear any background noise, by the way, my dad's cutting the grass outside and it's kind of loud, but I need to get this recorded if I'm going to stay on my video schedule, so you're just going to have to put up with that. I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, so yeah, I start out by doing the sky with this wet on wet technique. Basically you put water down and then you do the colour on top. It just makes the colour more consistent. I'm trying to make it darker at the top and then lighter as it gets closer to the horizon line. And yeah, I'm just going over everything, trying to make the colour like quite saturated and brighter because one thing i do know that i struggle with is um trying to get the colors like go like i always hold back when it comes to colors when i'm doing watercolor and uh, especially landscapes and it's like i need to feel more comfortable going bolder so yeah i then start like dabbing on some green i'm doing these in much more splotchy motions to try and get that grassy shaded effect that i'm going for like the foliage inconsistent look Whereas in the sky, I was trying to get very consistent strokes. I'm trying to get this classic watercolour effect here. And I'm just going over everything. I'm going to try and make it so there's a bit of a dip there. But I end up just doing that for all in the same colour for now. I can add more definition to that later. Uh, I do the same on the other side. And I go all the way down in that way. And yeah, I just go over everything. And then I add some rocks. The centre of it's going to be a river. I add some rocks in the middle of the river that the water can be flowing around. Um, and I think it will look really cute. As you can see, I start off by going really light, but I do darken these up significantly. Like I said, I need to feel more comfortable going with darker colours. As you can see, I'm bringing in a darker grey colour here. So, yeah. Um... <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is going a bit. <laughs> I'm not used to talking this much, especially now I'm back in school. <laughs> so, yeah, I add some smaller rocks around the big one. And then I start adding in the water. I go for quite a dark blue near the back, and it gets lighter as it becomes the rapids going around the rocks, where it's all white and frothy from the motion where it can't reflect the sky because it's not smooth anymore. I'm sure you know how water works. <laughs> so yeah, I really darken that out and try and create a nice gradient effect by just wetting my brush and dragging down the colour. Just blends it out nicely. It's a great thing about watercolour, you can really like manipulate the colours. And I do a nice darker one at the bottom as well, once the water is calmed after the waterfall-like section. Um, I'm not entirely sure how a waterfall formed in this section, because I'm pretty sure waterfalls form in the upper course, and it, the wide flat sections are in the l middle and lower courses. <clears throat> but I'm sure this exists. <laughs> Somewhere. I just create like some very thin line effects to go down the waterfall to make the impression of flowing water. As so, I just use a fine brush and just drag it down. And it... I blend this out later, but this creates a nice base effect to work with. As you can see, I do this all the way across, trying to make them nice and dark because they will be blended out. So as you can see, it blends out significantly. So yeah. I then dab on some white at the bottom to make the splash from the water running down, which I outline a bit and then blend that out to make it look more defined <clears throat> because it was all kind of merging into one thing and I wasn't really a huge fan of that. As you can see, I have no clue what I'm doing. Like, I'm sure there are better techniques with watercolor to create these effects, but yeah. I start dragging this up into the water and I do the same thing underneath with the dark blue to create a more of a defined area underneath the splash like it's creating a shadow. And I drag that down in much the same way. Except I do this a lot more consistently than I did on the waterfall because I don't want that liney effect. Um, so yeah. 
I go all the way down in this way and I think it looks really cool. I add some shading to the rocks just by adding an outline and then using a wet brush to blend it out. And I do the same on these smaller ones. I definitely did the outline a bit too dark on these ones, but um, it ends up looking okay once I've blended it out. So yeah, I'm not expecting to create masterpieces here. This is a learning experiment. <laughs> I use yellow to add, like this yellowy green colour to add some like sand, I guess, some sediment to the edge of the river. Um, not really sand, it'd be fine dirt or whatever. And I use a very watered out colour in the background to create some distant mountains. The background, then I outline the, this area to just add some more definition to that. Then I add some trees, um, some little fir trees just because I wanted to create some background elements that weren't too, too far away. And it just makes it look a bit more visually interesting. So I just create a feathered effect with that. And I think it looks super cool. I really like the trees, they're cute. Um, it's like details like trees and stuff, which I tend to like overlook when it comes to, um, watercolour paintings because I feel like I'm going to mess them up. <laughs> um, so I guess you could literally say I'd miss the forest for the trees. That phrase doesn't really apply here, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> I had a foreground tree and then some midground trees on the other side because I wanted to create the levels of depth that I was going for. Um, yeah, so I just draw these on and I do the trees in much the same way as I did on the other side. And I think they look really cool. And with that, I do the clouds by splotching it on much the same way I did the splash at the bottom. And I also shade this tree with some lighter colors to make it look more defined, especially as it's closer to the camera. So you would see more, it's not the camera, closer to the perspective. So you'd see more. And this is the final piece, not perfect by any means, but I do like it. I think it's pretty cool. And I think I learned a lot from this experience. So now I'm going to do another one. Uh, I just wanted to do a different colour palette. So I was kind of getting into the feel of doing watercolours. So I just wanted to run with that. So I start off by doing the same wet on wet technique for the sky. But I'm going to go for a much lighter blue. And how much my nail polish is chipping off is really bugging me. <laughs> and then I go for a washed out yellow colour underneath, which I blend in. Um, this is going to create a nice blue to yellow gradient because I didn't want the blue to be too big a factor in this one because I'm going for a very warm colour palette and blue is a cold colour. So I bring in this nice bright yellow underneath to create a nice strong colour horizon. And now I'm going to bring in orange for the landscape. I'm going to be doing a desert. So I bring in a nice orange sandy colour. I was going for desert, but it ends up looking more like Mars. <laughs> but not complaining, it still looks cool. So I'm just gonna go over all of that in a nice deep orange colour. And then I go over and add some red, which I mix in just to create some warmer tones in there. Which I think ends up looking super cool. And yeah. Going over it like this, and like where the white comes through, kind of makes me think of the surface of Jupiter. Maybe I was just thinking space, <laughs> I don't know. And I define a, a horizon line and I create some mountain rock structures in the background. And then I used a darker red colour to start creating some sand dunes, which I then blend out as so. Just blend it out nice and evenly and just try and make it look less blatant. It's just supposed to look like there is shadow here. And I think it looks pretty cute, just less flat and boring, which I think really, really helps. So yeah, I think it looks pretty cool going over it and I do the same on the other side just to make the variation all consistent. I wanted it to look fairly symmetrical so your mind is kept in the centre compositionally. 
if you make it too side heavy then you end up only staring at one side of the picture and that's not very fun so this isn't a lesson on composition i suck at composition and this is a landscape which i know how to compose a picture of a character or object i'm terrible at composition of landscapes you just about manage the foreground midground and background thing which i'm trying to exaggerate with the shrubs here so you have some shrubs in the foreground like these ones and then i'll have some shrubs in the midground and then you have the mountains in the background that's about as far of composition as i can understand but i think it's pretty cute i was gonna add cacti but i don't want to overdo this so i just also i have no idea how to draw cacti they'd always look cartoony and weird I now um, exaggerate the mountains because they were just kind of fading into non-existence there. So yeah, I try and make these a bit more defined. And I think it really helps bring the image together. I really like it. Also, I do think I prefer the lake, the river one. This is probably my least favourite of the two, but... I still like it and it is very different from the other one which is what I was going for with this so yeah as you can see I just add these final few shadows onto the mountains in the background as so and I also add in a cl cloud which I highlight the underside of in yellow to keep that color palette nice and consistent with the lighter color on top and the yellow underneath or well, the cooler color on top I should say and the warm yellow underneath it helps keep everything looking good and this is the final piece i really like it and um yeah so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you next week bye